Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Michael Fanning, CISO of Splunk. Michael, pleasure to be with you here today. Pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So Michael, AI is transforming security operations across the spectrum by enhancing threat detection, reducing false positives, and speeding up incident response. So can you please expand this and describe to our audience how AI is transforming security operation centers, also known in the industry as SOCs? Yeah, so um, you touched on a lot of great points on how SOCs are using uh, AI, uh, but I really like to break it down into a couple of different areas. The, the first area is is how does AI impact um, from like an off from an attack perspective, and how do we think about securing against AI? How do we think about protecting AI assets uh, internal to our company? And then lastly, how do you think about how does AI transform the SOC? So that's really the kind of the three you know categories that I think about. Um, the first, from the you know, from the offensive perspective and from an attacker's perspective, the the threat vectors really remain the same. I, I think that the difference is is what we have to do is, you know, improve how we're able to detect and respond faster to attacks. Um, generally speaking, like I had said, the threat vectors remain the same. Phishing is still a phishing attack, but a phishing attack has gotten much better. Um, much more realistic compared to the attacks that we're familiar with in the past. And so that's really how I like to kind of think about from the from the attacker perspective, which really means how, how are we able to detect and respond faster? And that's where AI can be a great uh, tool and co-pilot for those that work in a security operations center. Um, what AI is really doing from my perspective is a, is a couple of things to help out a defender. Uh, number one, it, it helps us from a detection perspective. It helps you to be able to create your detection language that you would use, your detection logic that you would use to detect an attack a little bit quicker than maybe it would before when you're writing, say, if you're talking about Splunk, for example, the Splunk processing language or SPL, uh, you get that kind of co-pilot capability that allows you to create um, uh, a, a detection a little bit quicker than you would have been able to do maybe prior to AI as a, as a co-pilot. Um, there are other areas that I know that everyone is exploring with regard to kind of the more automated workflow of a, of a security incident and how AI can help a defender from start to finish um, with an investigation. So I think really, you know, what we're most likely to see is, is again, uh, if I use the phishing as an example, a, a, a phishing attack comes in, automation and AI detects that as a phishing attack. And there's an, there's an automated action that takes place with the logic of artificial intelligence that, that kind of goes through the assessment, the remediation of a, of a phishing incident, removing that fish from someone's inbox. And then of course, in, in all of that, I think you still have the human in the loop, which means a SOC analyst is still gonna be involved with validating all of those corrective measures that would be taken uh, during that, that that potential attack campaign to validate that like, yes this is what ai has recommended that we do uh, but to just kind of ensure that these are the correct actions we'll do a quick validation and then click a few buttons and move forward with the, the entire remediation process well certainly we we can now talk about the intersection of ai and cybersecurity and how to mitigate risk how to loop them on top of each other in order to make it more efficient. And not just thinking about how we want to move quicker, better, faster, but also taking into the concern of cybersecurity and the security elements that was very eloquently said. So thank you for that. And Michael, how can SOCs streamline disconnected tools and workflows? And that is something certainly that's prevalent in our ecosystem today. And folks are really trying to look for the best way to do things. You know, I think the first step there is recognizing that what you just said is a real problem. So so I think that there's it takes, you know, a bit to just kind of reflect on on how your SOC is operating and understand that there really is this massive tooling sprawl. If your SOC analysts are hopping between, say, a detection console, uh, an EDR console, a, a different console that helps you look at, say, asset inventory, I think the statistics are there are greater than 20 distinct tools that a SOC analyst might touch in a, in a given day. So you need to really 
just recognize that that's a problem, listen to the SOC analysts and understand what their day to day looks like. Uh, we've done some initiatives internally where we've effectively done a rationalization of the tools that we use. Um, are they the right tools for the job? Are we fully utilizing the capabilities that they offer? Do they, do they make sense? And then ultimately what happens is, is you, you identify overlap in the tooling capabilities. And, and that leads you down the path of how do you streamline you know, those workflows? And I think, again, it starts with understanding where you have duplicative capabilities or capabilities that don't make sense, consolidating those capabilities, and then through automation, automated workflows, that's where you can really help to do the, the streamlining capabilities. My favorite capability that we have internally is, is our use of our, our SOAR platform, our SOAR the security orchestration and automated response platform. It has just with any SOAR, I think regardless of the vendor, or any automation, that ability to just take those manual steps out of the process and fully automate them and consolidate and collapse the time that it takes for a full investigation is just incredibly valuable. Well, very, very much so. And we talk a lot about the SOC performance and the measures that we have and how we validate things in terms of speed and output, et cetera. So how does the tool sprawl affect SOC performance? Yeah, I, I think about how many consoles and windows does a SOC analyst have open for them, for that person to do, to do their job. So if you think about a detection fires, okay, here's a, here's the asset that the detection fired against. Where do I go next to understand what that asset is? In some instances, you may not have an asset inventory system. You might have multiple asset inventory systems, depending on, is this a production environment? Is this a corporate environment? Is it a lab environment? How do I kind of run down and find, understand where that asset exists? Then what might happen is, is okay, this environment over here in this production environment, it uses a different endpoint detection and response capability than uh, what we have deployed within our production or within our corporate uh, laptop user endpoint environments, et cetera. So you, I think what happens to a stock analyst is they go through this context switching so many times per day and it's and it's not just a context switch on what the detect what the detection was that fired and what that detection and what that investigation looks like it's maybe depending on the environment that i was doing an investigation and even though it's the same like a similar attack or a similar kind of detection that fired i might have a completely different set of tools that i have to use in this environment over here compared to this one and so different you have different runbook workflows different capabilities of automation different abilities to respond and it, and it ultimately just creates this scenario where an investigation i think is two three x longer than it should if compared to whether or not if you had more of a collapsed consistent uh, capability across all of your environments well yes certainly and we talk a lot about the different ways that we could help the SOC team do their job in a way that's important across the board for the organization. So Michael, what is detection as a code and how does this benefit the SOC team? So you're gonna hear probably multiple definitions of what detection as code actually actually is, but I'll tell you the way that, you know, the way, the way that I think about it. It's, it's treating your detection as similar to the way a software engineer might treat uh, code that they commit into production. So effectively what that looks like is you have a development life cycle. Within that development life cycle, you have quality, you have quality checks on your code for your detection. Does your, is your code performant? Um, it's one thing to be able to detect an event, but is it, does it detect an event in a, in a performant way? Um, you're also gonna have, say, a change control process. You're gonna have versioning. Uh, you might have a release, a release process or a release cadence would say, on this particular day of the week, this is when we deploy new detections into our production environments. And then lastly, I think uh, if you tie it all together, if you think about the continuous integration, um, continuous deployment of detections through CICD pipelines is really that entire ecosystem of detection as code. So you've got the similar processes to software engineering, change management, 
change control, versioning, quality control, a level of validation, and then you've got complete automation from the time the detection has been authored to the time that it's deployed and it's now available to a SOC analyst. Well, Michael, thank you very much and well done and extremely well said. In terms of the breakdown, to really have our community understand all these areas that you described today. And I always like to ask my interviewees to share a cybersecurity helpful hint or a tidbit with the audience that they feel very passionate about in some way that would be helpful, whether it's personal or whether it's for work. It could be elementary or as sophisticated as you'd like. So please share with us something. My mantra with cybersecurity is keep it simple, nail the basics. If you're able to do the fundamentals very, very well, then you're likely running a high quality cybersecurity organization. I like to use a basketball analogy of, you don't necessarily need to shoot threes all day. If you can hit layups, hit free throws, play good defense, you probably have a pretty good basketball team. Uh, the same thing is true for cybersecurity. You don't need to skip ahead to, you know, these very sophisticated capabilities, know how to patch, have a solid detection and response program, nail identity, and, and you know, some other core areas. And I think you're going to do a really good job. Well, excellent analogy. And uh, certainly basketball is my favorite sport. So thank you, Michael, for that. <laughs> what a pleasure speaking with you today. And our sh I'm sure our community really appreciates all that you've shared. Thank you, Michael. I yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for having me.